Hey, Aaron, just Hi, uh, Jay. give us a summation of uh, what you saw from the quarterbacks today. Um, who the starter is. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm sorry. I'm not... <laughs> I'm not ready to say that yet. It's starting to take. It's the the quarterback picture is becoming more clear. I'm not. I'm not quite ready to say what it is yet. I need to watch this film, but um, things are starting to become more clear each day. And um, I thought today the scrimmage pretty much uh, stayed true to the pattern that we've been seeing up to this point in practice. And so, um, but. You know, I need to talk to our quarterbacks before I start talking to you guys about all that. So, um, and I want to watch the film too before I just to confirm that, you know, what I'm seeing is what I'm really seeing. So, um, but all three of them did some good things today, and um, you know, I know, I know that's a, that's a that's a boring answer for you guys, but they're playing they're playing good. We've got a good group, and um, I will say this: when when Jaron Jaron and Baylor look like veteran QBs, they run our offense efficiently. And then Conover is just a guy. He's got, he's got his moments where he's just like, you know, he's, I, I don't like to compare anybody to anybody, but he's a young. It's almost like Zach when he was young. He's, some of the plays he makes are really big plays, and then some of the mistakes he makes are just young, young mistakes. They're just, they're things that get uh, fixed with time. And so, but the upside's really high, and so it, he's an intriguing dude, man. He's a good player, and so it's it's just fun having those. Uh, you know the contrast there of the two veterans that really know what they're doing and run the show with the with the young guy that's that's got a super bright future that uh, is really explosive kid. Coach, what are you most satisfied with through uh, seven practices, one scrimmage under your belt as the offensive coordinator? Um, I'm never satisfied, so I, I don't I can't really say what I'm satisfied with. I just I think we're on track to being to being good. Okay, we're uh, I don't think we're I don't think we're way ahead of where we where we were a year ago. I don't think we're way behind. I think we're right on track. Our most of our install is in. Um, we are 95 percent of our offense is in, um, and, and now we've sort of identified who our best players are, and you know the next week or so will be fine-tuning things where we're thinking more, more about getting the ball to the right people in the right places. You know, up to this point, we've installed the offense. We've just been running plays, learning the concepts, learning their assignments, everybody learning what we do. And now, as we get deeper into camp, we'll start featuring our best players doing the things that they do best. OK, let's go Norma and then Sean. So the quarterback position battle aside, what can you tell us about the other position battles, the backs, the wideouts? What do you see from all these guys where you just have so much depth? Miles Davis, that guy is a good player, and he's going to play for us. That's that's one I'll tell you uh, just needs to be said. That guy stands out. Every time he plays, he does something good. Same thing happened last year as a freshman. He'd get in games, and he was playing at a different speed than everybody else. And um, he's he does something good every day. Um, you know, I d can't say enough good things about our three tight ends, uh, Dallin Holker and, and Isaac Rex and, and Mason Wake. Those three guys are playing really well. And then we've got a couple other young guys that are doing good things too. Uh, you know, Carter Weed and, and, and Bentley uh, Hanshaw are, are playing well. But those top three guys are really standing out and it gives us a lot of flexibility. We can do some fun things with those guys. And... Um, yeah, those are, those would be some of the ones, the, some of those position battle type things that are looking good. This kind of falls in line a little bit with this coach, but maybe maybe just by way of follow up, when you look at the overall depth chart and, and as you're kind of putting together the two deep in your head, are are a lot of your are a lot of your kind of early thinking sort of solidified, or are you also seeing things that are maybe surprising you and? in some ways where you go, oh, I, I didn't expect that, but I need to move this guy further up or that guy further up. or I don't know how spe specific you want to be, but are you just kind yeah. of reconfirming to yourself, I guess, or, or are you seeing a lot of surprises too? Um, no major surprises. Um, I, you know, and sometimes w the skill players have to understand that you're not just competing against the other guy in your position group. You know, in this offense, we can play with a lot of different position groups. So what you're really doing every day is just trying to prove 
that you can be trusted to do your job well and then we can play in a lot of different personnel groups and that's that's part of this offense is we want to we want to put different groupings on the field and see how teams try to defend us and and um, you know one game to the next we might find a, a different advantage over another team in, in, in a different group but in order to do that we need a lot of guys that can, that we can trust so if I'm the third or fourth tight end I'm, I'm not just trying to I'm not just trying to be the next best tight end. I'm also trying to prove that I'm more trustworthy than the fourth or fifth receiver or the, or the third running back or whatever. And so uh, I guess one of the things I've been pleased with up to this point is we have some personnel group versatility, which allows us to have some fun with, with, uh, with our offense. You know, we, we kind of do a lot of the same things over and over, but we, we mix up who's on the field. And I also think that helps the team morale too, because you're always, you're always you know, you're always got a chance to play. If we can, you know, we might have two tight ends on the field. We might have three. We might have four receivers on the field. Uh, we do a lot of a lot of fun things with those guys, and and uh, it's it's good to have good skill players to work with. Coach, okay, last uh, question, Ben. Yeah, uh, Coach. Uh, this uh, this defense statistically over the last five years has, has done a pretty good dang good job um, every single year. What challenges does this defense pose schematically? And then um, in, in this particular team, personnel-wise, what do you like about this defense that Alessa Tuiaki runs? Uh, yeah, our defense has always been, has been really good the whole time I've been here. And they're even better now than they've ever been. Um, our linebackers are really good players. I mean, uh, Coach Funk made the comment the other day that he, he, he felt like our backers were as good as any of the, that he played against in the Big Ten. I mean, he said that's what it reminded him of is a, that type of linebacker crew when he was at Michigan. Um, they're, they're good and um, our defensive line is physical and they're deep. They just keep rolling big guys out there that just that just uh, play really tough. And then, and then this is the most secondary depth I've seen our team have in the time that I've been here as well. So. Um, but you know what's tough about it is that they can stop the run. You know, I know a lot of people criticize this, but our team can rush three guys. They play a three-man front, drop eight, and they can stop the run in that defense and still make it really hard for you to throw. You know, we're a team that wants to throw the ball down the field, and it's hard to do that in practice. They're just there's they're good back there, and they're they're uh, they're doing a lot of good stuff. They they got good players and really solid scheme, and they're well coached and tough, and they fly around and run to the ball, and it's. It's a challenge every day.